Your own win. So the series is tied and we're going to head into game number three. Leftovers, if they take it here today, they go to the Western Clash. They play with a sub, they play with a Sonic. And we have the next battleground, Leftovers. They choose Tomb of the Spider Queen. Granite Gaming is sitting at an 0-3 here, whereas we have a 2-1 track record for Leftovers. I really feel this is one of the maps, if you are Granite Gaming and you take it here, yeah. you are in a fantastic spot. But this is really where Leftovers are saying, okay, let's take the early 2-1, bring them on the map where they are not strong, where we ourselves feel confident in. And once we have the lead, we have two maps to close it out. This is a map that you may have to consider taking or picking in the Diablo away, right? This is a battleground that we see yeah. very often for the Leftovers. They first started showcasing Diablo on this battleground when he wasn't as popular here in the HEC. They love these Lightning Breath combinations, the forces they engages in really tight chokes, and of course, finding ways to get damage there. So this is something that needs to be thought about when it comes to Granite Gaming. Also, when we're coming back to it, the question that remains for me personally still is, do you ban out Murden again? Yeah. Really worked well. We saw game number one on Dragonshire. Fantastic play by Nando and Murden. Had a lot of pressure onto all the heroes. Got banned out in game number two, so this is something that we could see again from the leftovers if they feel that Nanda has too much of an impact with that frontline hero to set up kills. And we've seen Chromie twice in a row now. This is another map where you could actually play Chromie. Is there any heroes that you think about banning out for Sonic the Beast here? I know when you think about Sonic the Beast, you think about his Genji and you think about his Jaina. Those are the two heroes that really stand out for me. Is that an option you can go down? Tracer is another one that yeah. you can play. The thing is just you have already someone like DAB on the map. So True. I think they have a pretty big overlap in the hero pool, but that doesn't make it bad. You can still, as we've seen in one, play Tracer and Phoenix and other heroes as well. But I don't think you you focus on uh, on Sonic here if, in terms of bans if you're granted gaming. Sure. If anything, then you're trying to target DAB again. It's not that you can ban him out. That's not going to happen. But you can at least take his most impactful heroes away from him. Genji banned. Hanzo the back here from the leftovers. And now the question: Will we get any more specific bans here from Granite Gaming? Are we gonna stick with typical bans? Last time we saw the Malfurion for them taken away. Before that, we had Urel. They decided to go for the Diablo. Okay, so they're gonna take it away. It's and a good adjustment for it sure. It is. And also, the solo laners come to mind too. We have seen Ural banned out in game number one. In game number two, she wasn't even picked. It's another strong area. Phoenix actually getting banned by leftover. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, if anything, I would have expected that to be coming in from Granite Gaming. And they play a lot of Phoenix, but again, also with very, very mixed results. Two wins, nine losses for Granite with that hero. Oh, Tassada, super early commitment to a double support composition. We haven't seen Jimmy yet. True. Could be our first game with him. But Leftovers also played Reyna. Mm. Had the AB on Reyna several times. So that might be a hero that they pick up now. I think Reyna and maybe a Kane could be a good rotation for them here. They got Kane, Urel again seem to be a high priority for them in oh. the earlier stages. And they go for Mayev. They have it. That's also the answer to our question. Do they swap another hero, another player into Mayev? And this time they prioritize her high enough so that they can get her since Granite Gaming committed to a ban on the second or third spot in every single one of these drafts up to the up to this time. Second and third pick coming in here for Granite Gaming. Will they show their hyper carry yet? I think it has to. Now Furion and Johanna. Okay, they don't. Interesting. But boy, do they set up for any hyper carry they want to move into. Yes. You have a strong front line with wave clear. You have your double support that can sit in the back and protect that. Of course, provide the heals as needed. So we have Trace available. We have Jim Rayner still out there. Those are the two that immediately come to mind when you're talking about a high up high carry setup. I feel like if you want to get rid of any of them, maybe take away the Tracer. They Hammer. Just start a hammer. Hammer is another option, yes. Yeah. With her ability to have on sub bolo four. Makes it harder for my to engage. Do you be in Jaina here? Not to taunt or to target Song Beast, but I feel like it'd be a really good combination here with Maiev. With the burst damage after yeah. you start the engage and you lock them into the fight. Yeah. And they ban out Murd and that makes me believe that there is going to be a Jaina, uh, sorry, a Jimmy pick if they get it. 
Muradin jumping in together with Mayev, that's usually target towards a single hero. Trace sure. that has the mobility that allows her to get away. So this is looking more and more to me like we are going to see Jim Reyna on the side of Planet Gaming if the leftovers don't take it for themselves. Urel stitches. Urel doesn't surprise me. That's really a hero that I could have seen banned out. Oh yeah, hyper carry time. It has to be Jimmy. Yeah. Cassie wouldn't make sense here anymore. It's also, for me, it was always between uh, Tracer and Reyna. And if you ban out Murr, then that's immediately where I say, okay, you're going to try and go for Reyna. You have already uh, my F there. Does the stitches really deter you enough? Go away from that. I just don't think so. There's Jimmy. Illidan for Dark Mork. All right, we're going to okay. pull YOLO now. All right. A Dark Mork is special. What if the feed on the Oregon game too was like, like, I can't play Leo, give me Illidan. High level plays here from him. He definitely can play Illidan. The that question is, is, is Illidan strong enough that he makes a difference here? Some have already tried to play him. We had actually one game from Method with Illidan and that backfired. Cassia on the last pick now. There's a lot of auto attacks here on the other side, so that works for that. The blinds are gonna be good. Yeah. I mean, Illidan with a double support setup is actually not re not too bad. And uh, one of the cool things about him is he really distracts from that backline. So then you have an opportunity to get the damage in with Reyna. So you have to really work around your focus. It also explains the uh, Muradin ban even more. It's not only that you ban Muradin before because he's great against Reyna and you are a bit afraid that you have Muradin together with Mayev jumping in and trying to get yeah. the kill. But it also is a great hero when you're facing off against Illidan. And it's lore appropriate against Maev. Illidan, Maev, perfect mix up. Posing teams here. This looks pretty good. Illidan is not your typical side laner here. That's actually something. This is one of the things where I'm a little bit weirded out by some of the drafts that we see from Granite Gaming. Yeah. That they really. Damo was always a player that is. He really likes Mobile Hero. His Kerrigan play on this map stands out in the past, but the meta has shifted since then. And the one thing that I find sometimes a bit weird is that they're making these decisions of going into uh, such a solo laner. Can work out. Yeah. But we have, for example, not really seen them with a lot of URL play. We had one single game with URL. And you have to think about it for a second. Granite Gaming played a single game with Urel, and we have Urel is one of the most popular side laners right now, and by far the most impactful, and they just don't play her. He prefers to have those melee assassins that he feels like he can make a major impact on the game, right? Instead of the slow impact where you're soaking, sustaining through. Yeah, but at some point I don't care anymore. At some yeah. point you have to just say, okay, I accept that this is one of the strongest heroes in the game right now. Well, here we go. We'll see if the LNM will work out. On the left side, for Granite Gaming. Wolfjaw on Malfurion, Memecraft on Tassadar, Nande on Johanna, Darkmok on Illidan, and Raid Boss to play Raynor. And over to the right side, we have linked on the support, Deckard Kane for him, Sonic Lus up on Mayev. Holy Boss is taking, uh, again, Ural. Mopsy, of course, finds himself on Stitches, and DAB is a rocking on Cassia. But this is definitely a thought to hold for a bit longer. I mentioned earlier how strong and impactful Urel is in the current meta. She has by now roughly 70 games played just below, and she has still a 62% win rate. That is insane for competitive play. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Darkmoke on Illidan goes down immediately, gets targeted, hooked, and taken apart. And you have to really ask here, is Illidan the pick? Even if they win with it, why does Granite Gaming not play Ural? At this point, you just have to accept that that is a hero you need to pick up. Sometimes the meta doesn't fit your style, but then you have to make it work if you're playing on that level. Especially with what's available for control for the leftovers. I mean, right there, you saw that your cane just get the full scroll right on top of Illidan. At that point, he has to decide to dash out or dash into the fight. If he dashes away, suddenly Rainer is exposed, so he dashed in. There just wasn't enough healing to keep him alive. He's a very squishy target, even with that evasion being something that he can use. Early on in particular, Illidan is not really the strongest. He can do well in the solo setup in a one versus one, but his usual teamfight strength comes online a bit later in the game. This early kill is not going to be the end of the game, and still, that Illidan play can work out there. Illidan has a couple of arguments in his favor, and right now he's also being played in a double support setup with the Tacita shields, where very likely... Actually, it's going to be interesting what the level 4 choice is. Both could be taken here. The extra life leech with Illidan and Reyna are definitely a thought. 
but you can also make the argument against the burst that comes oftentimes out of Cassio with a Maiev setup that you want to go for extra armor. Be that as it may, Illidan has support here that can help him in the later stages to have a huge impact in this game. For me, it's more so the fact that it limits the drafting that we see from Gunner Game. Well, for now, Leftovers continue to rotate back and forth. The Arel doing pretty well in this bottom lane. Dark Mop playing as safe as he can. Typically, what you have to do when you're playing Illidan and you don't know where your opponents are at. Yeah. Granite Gaming also working on their night camp, grabbing an early pressure play here in the middle lane. The Leftovers will answer back by working on the Giants. With your opponent being so uh, non-aggressive in the bottom lane, you can make a play for those Giants, but actually Granite Gaming sniffs us out. They yeah. rotate down and try to fight their own. It's such a common rotation these days that that was not a surprise, but look at that follow-up. Yeah, that's the kill. Malfurion goes down. Raid Boss is also dead. That's an easy double kill. The Siege Giant camp taken too. And this is just not looking pretty whatsoever on the side of Granite Gaming right now. They see the rotation, they know it's there, they move in, and Leftover says, well, you know what, we do not care. Thanks for the extra kills. We're gonna take those, and we're gonna take the bot ball. So this is my issue with Illidan, is even though we've fallen behind, he's having a hard time in the lane, this is typically things that you expect. You don't really have a moment with Illidan where it's like, okay, I power spike heavily. This is my moment in the game, right? When you fall behind, you feel like you're behind the entire game. Sure, you can go for a hunt at level 10 and maybe try to find a number advantage somewhere else, but where is that moment where you say, okay, we've hit our scaling moment? When does that happen for Granite Gaming? Right now, I'm having a hard time finding an answer. And Portiboss is actually really pulling him around here with those constant interrupts that we're seeing. The blinds of Cassia definitely do not help either. So uh, let's see if they find these fights, but they can just, if they can drive the fight, Illidan excels. He's yes. a hero that loves, if when the forts are down, there's space on the map, that's what Illidan absolutely loves. Then all of a sudden, your opponent has a huge distance to safety. You can chase them down all day long. And that's what Dark Monk is going to be looking for. The early game is definitely going to be tough for him. And that's why I question that pick a little bit, because if you get snowballed in the early game on Tower on Tumble the Spider Queen, we all know what, what's happening there. But again, once that we have that late game coming online, Illidan might actually uh, really be able to push that back heavily. For now, Leftovers continue to control the early game. A little bit of pressure here on Sitches. Dark Monk does get that full engage on that main tank, but he has the help on the backside to help him up. Song of Beast comes in, getting a nice little fan of knives on two members to get in that reset in case anyone does move in. They're trying to drop off these gems. Another flashlight comes out, but Leftovers will attempt one more time. Yeah, it was a nice interrupt, and now the uh, turn-in is there. That's exactly the problem. You are lacking a bit early on, so Leftovers take advantage of that. They force these fights, they, they zone them out, and they get the Web Weavers, and Granite Gaming hasn't turned in a single gem yet. That in itself is not an issue, but it becomes a problem if they now lose a hero or two and lose those gems, so they need to be very careful with that. Hook Already the out. hook hits Wolf Joe. He's going to be able to move away from this one, but Nanda is still not out of the fight. Sonic has actually taken a lot of damage here. It was a very good counter aggression from Granite Gaming to shut him down. But he taps on the fountain and then starts re engaging here. Yeah, you can definitely tap there. Bottom lane, Yorel continues to push in. Illidan's trying to clear up that Web Weaver as quickly as he can, but Potty Boss just continues to bully him around and control the gym consumption. Now, Will should be falling pretty soon here. Wolf Joe gets caught again as he gets picked out. Cassia comes in with a fan, and Nande might be next. He has 23 gems here. No tether from Sonic Le Beast. Looks like he already used that earlier. Yeah. The Illidan, turrets. Illidan is busy at the bot lane. He's going to defend that one. But here in the middle, that is a different story. That level advantage on the leftover side is just absolutely brutal. They are looking at a one and a half level lead, and they are likely to. Uh, maybe they're not getting that four just yet, but they're likely to take that out pretty soon. So far, it's a fantastic game for leftovers. Dominating the early game, identifying the opponent's weakness, playing to their own strength, and now, of course, going to attempt and get a second turn in here or get level 10 early and deny it at least to Granite Gaming. And they start with the camp here. The entire force of Granite Gaming is starting to focus a bit more heavily towards the top and uh, attempt to get access to the turn and point themselves. Keep in mind, they haven't turned in a single gem yet. Blinds are coming out. Dark Mork all over the place, as you would expect from an Illidan player, and always gets the shields here from Tacita. Yeah, he's making a lot of room here, actually. Finally, Leftovers is starting to come to the area, though. They were waiting on that night camp to be grabbed. Their main goal here was to just stop that turn in. 66 gems are available for Granite Gaming, and they did not drop any off. Currently still yeah. sitting at zero. And now level 10 is so close for Leftovers that it should be impossible for them to turn in. What is chasing here? That level 7 talent. Making it very hard for Rainer to back up. Under. Body blocked. Iron Skin gets out. Okay. Plays around the tether. Mopsio not going for the hook just yet. Dodge attempts, but the 10 is there. And that gives us Gorge. We have Valkyrie too. 
Illidan still with an attempt to get some experience for his team and get them closer to level 10. But this is just bad news. There's enough gems in the hands of the leftovers to get a turn in. They're missing one. You can pick that up at any moment. And that would, um, be, that would be a massive snowball. If they get the 10 and they get the web weaver wave right now, how do you defend against that? Granite Gaming needs to hurry to get that heroic ability. I really like this Gorge pick too. If you have a Diver coming your way, one of the ways to make sure that they don't get that threshold of where you hit that moment where Illidan starts to take over is you just Gorge him. He comes in for the engage, yeah. you drop it, and then of course you can decide if you want to force a fight. And if the fight does get forced by Granite Gaming with that Gorge coming in, you got to stay a while and listen, ward of the cage too, and you say, okay, we're going to fight right here. Leftovers, get the turn in, have 11, and they're looking for extra forts. The good news for Granite Gaming is they will have their own 10. Uh, do they have Tassada though? And the answer is no. Memecraft gets hooked. He loses 22. And Leftovers now have a 5 versus 4. 10 is there for Granite Gaming, but for another couple of seconds, they will have the Web Weavers in a numeric advantage. Can pressure that. It's getting bad, man. It's going full Jenga. It really is. Middle wave, top lane, bottom lane, all pushed in. Granite Gaming now finally hits their level 10s. It will be the hunt picked up. I'm happy that they go for the hunt. Because I think the only way that they can take something here is if they create numeric advantages on the map and an imbalance that they can capitalize on. And if they do not have that, hunt. and I don't think it's going to make a difference. They're going into the back line here. Going for Linked, trying to take him down. He has to stay a while, listen ready. Sonic the Beast is low, very low actually. Here comes then engage. Big fight with Tranquility, keeping them alive at least for now. Reyna putting the damage out, but Ural is already on top of him. Hopping the Arden Defender here too. Leftovers on the move back. Dartmoor trying to follow it up, running straight into the stun of Deckard Kane. But they push the fight back at least for now. What? Massive amount of cooldowns used here, but Look no one pushes. Middle lane, bottom lane. This keep is already taking damage. That wall was destroyed. The bottom lane is still nice and healthy. And leftovers say, okay, well, we have to defend that bottom lane. Let's just take their four in the top. And they start to group up and say, wait a minute, you actually have people on the bottom lane. We can even look at a boss. They get sniffed out, though, but it's the 13 talent advantage and the two level lead. The stats advantage that we're seeing for Granite is the big difference. Illidan is at the bot lane. He is going to have hunt in a few seconds. The auto attacks are going to reduce that cooldown and he's going to try and hunt in, which is exactly what we're seeing any second right now. They are trying to get that. Body fight. boss. Oh my god. He got the perfect knockback and that allowed DAB to move in and get the fin and just delete Malfurion. Yeah, not even going for that. And under, if he falls, 33 gems for him. They want him, they get him. Leftovers are absolutely destroying Granite Gaming here. I mean, this isn't even funny anymore. This is honestly looking at this moment like a pro team slapping in a match to team around. That's what we're currently looking at here right now. Like, that Illidan last pick just does, or the last rotation does nothing for Granite. You have Blinds on the other side, you have the Gorge, you have a Ural in that one versus one setup. Hody Boss is just completely outplaying the bot lane or did in the early game. There's a couple of turns, uh, gems turned in, but the only reason why Granite Gaming can turn in gems is because Leftovers committed to the boss. So now they can try and complete the turn in, likely to do that, but it only means, hey, you have a boss, we can't deal with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you 50 gems, we turn these in right now, and you give us the time to defend the bot top lane, and we allow you to clear the web weavers for free. And Leftovers will definitely clear that up. They have the wave clear with W Bill starting to come online here for Stitches, especially post level 7. It's going to get worse at 16 2 when he gets that slow coming in. Yeah, Miam as well. Urel hopping around too. I don't even think these Web Weavers have even touched the walls of their opponents. They shouldn't. Leftovers has everything defended. It's also, it's just, it's just, if you look at the level discrepancy, it's absolutely mind blowing. It's a two and a half level lead. 13 talents, and yeah, just nowhere to be found. And again, if you're that far ahead, it's not only about the talent advantage. Normally, when you just have a level difference, it doesn't matter too much. But this is a problem of stats advantage. Illidan hunts in. Valkyrie is not connecting. Gorgeous there. That might actually be a good fight for Granite Gaming. If they can get the fight here, nice condemn comes out. Tranquility keeps them in play a little bit longer. But now Darkmog is in trouble and he goes down. Gorge on Raynor. Able to stop some of that damage for a little bit. Leftovers answer back. DAB did get low, but the potions yeah. are too much. Potions are simply too much. For a moment, it even looked like they could maybe get a kill against Stitches here as he was in deep. But then uh, just, yeah, Dickhead keeps them alive. And after Tranquility is over, there's just nothing to heal out all the damage anymore. And with Lillian falling first, that's just lights out. 
I mean, if that was even Talon Tears, maybe would have worked out. The Web Weaver getting the damage in there too with this casting animation yeah. would have been close enough to maybe help secure that kill. I mean, we had a sh for a short period of time, we just had a double talent advantage yeah. for our leftovers over Grand Gaming. They just now got the 13 talent. They're more than three levels behind. Leftovers, farming. I mean, <laughs> this puts perspective. They haven't taken down a single fort yet. No, they have not. To be <laughs> let me actually double check. Have they taken a turret? I think they got the one in the middle. They got the gate in the middle. No, yet. They got the gate, but they didn't get the turret. They haven't taken a single turret down. Now, that is a problem, and it's also something where if you somehow win a fight, if they somehow take a fight at any point and they actually win, take two, three heroes down, and start to take these structures, they will very, very, very quickly gather the experience. That's the one way back into this game. You win a team fight, you have to win one where you're down a talent and down several levels because that's not going to change. And then you're going to try and take the structures down. But it looks very, very likely that the leftovers are just completely rolling over them right now. This is not a snowball. This is an avalanche that we're watching. Mimecraft I mean, just sees a mental shift there in the middle, thinking that a hook was going to come out. That's how terrified he is of getting picked off. And leftover just goes straight in. Put some damage on the core here. They back up when the hunt pops in. Stay a while, listen, connects. It hits four members. Wolf Joe is fine. Provides heals, but that's the Warden's Cage. That's the Phantom Knife. Sonic Love Beast is putting out the damage right now. Yeah, DAP2 is Cassia, and there's Malfurion gone, and they are just scrambling, rushing away as the Web Weavers are taking down the bottom keep, and they are going for the core right away. 11 kills against zero. 17, nearly 18 versus level four. Dartmoor goes down on Illidan again, and this is uh, this this is bru this is honestly brutal to watch. There it is, another pick and raid boss. Memecraft trying to stand firm here. Johanna on the bottom left has the Hearthstone, and she got beat up a little bit too much. Doesn't matter though, because leftovers from their attention towards the core, and they will get the win going up in the series uh, two to one, and they are one step away from securing their slot at the Western Clash. Great game of leftovers. Nothing else to say there. 13 kills against zero, and again, they are playing with a sub. You know who's disappointed about that match right there. Besides you. I'm honestly a bit mad. Yeah. Uh, seriously. It's like, Granite Gaming has played better and better and better every single week. I was so impressed with their games against Team Liquid. You can always argue that they should have never lost the series against Team Liquid, and that is a a weakness on their end that they couldn't clutch out a win on map four and map five last weekend. And that's a good argument to make. That's actually a really good point where you can say, okay, I totally agree with that. But then again, they're still learning. They're still finding that rhythm. So with a bit more of experience, they will f have these situations and they will do way better there. Mm. But it's just the improvement of that team and the way that they've been drafting, which completely amazed me because I came into phase two and I really thought they would be one of the weaker ones. And they completely, especially after the swap from Nanda into the main tank position and raid boss over to damage, that honestly convinced me. I looked at that and was just like, okay, this is fantastic. And today, game one, game two, it was fine, but that was a total letdown right now. Oh. And I'm ac I'm actually a little bit mad here. I feel like Leftovers played fantastic from their perspective. Great. Keep doing what you're doing. We've been talking about how amazing you guys are. But I want this to be an even fight. And right now sure. they're getting that. And I don't understand what that choice was there towards the end. That I mean, okay, if they win, like I, I stand there like, a, like an idiot. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm a dummy. Sure, sure. But... It wasn't even close. I feel like it, the part that really frustrates me is it's on Two Minutes Spider Queen where Illidan doesn't really have room to kind of evolve or even play around with a little bit, so I don't yeah. see where that positive is. I would have preferred even a Kerrigan there. At least then you're saying, okay, I'm trying to get chokes and try to pull on a combo and try to kill people. Exactly. Then you can argue for the early game, but I don't yeah. see the argument here. I mean, whenever have you heard the sentence, oh, Illidan is fantastic in the early game, it's the late game where he struggles a little bit. Just now. <laughs> it's like, he, he has an early game weakness. It's Tomb. Yeah. What does Europe do on Tomb? You snowball early. You, tr I mean, this is the one thing that when we are at a national event, the uh, North American players and casters always echo. They're saying, like, Europe understands this map. They're trying to snowball you early. It's something that we have to do, too. We can't play for the long game here. Now you're having players that have been around for this long. I mean, Darkmog was with the original teams that used that strategy here. Makes me angry. I want them to come back here. We deserve a five mapper. That we do, and we'll see if we're going to get it here. But first, let's go ahead and look at all the teams that are currently qualified for the Western Clash. The Leftovers are looking to sneak their way in there into that fourth spot. Right now, for Europe, your representatives will be Team Dignitas, Team Liquid, and Method. Over at North America, 
Heroes Hearth Esports, Temple Storm, and Team Freedom was able to grab their spot last night with their big win. And we won five maps and leftovers, they won four. They are saying, you know what, guys, we have the 2-1. Guys? Take it right now. And of course, talking about the event, you can uh, go to the event as well, playerheroes.com slash esports slash tickets. Make so sure that you check that out. That's fantastic weather in California now, too. So that's a bonus. Make a vacation out of it. Mm -hmm. Go to the Western Clash. Go to the beach. Yeah. It's worth it. Get a burrito. Get Life is great. Esports. Yeah. It'll be awesome. Let's go to game number four here when it comes to the battleground, and we'll see if we can get a fifth game out of this series here. If Granite Gaming has any more tricks.